All right, uh, I'm Tim Scoggins, Chairman of the Shaftesbury Select Board. I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.30 on Monday, October 7th, 2019. I'm told that we are live streaming on Facebook and that the uh, CAT TV access will catch up in just a few minutes, so I hope that's the case. Uh, let me check with the board. Does anyone have a conflict of interest with anything appearing on the agenda this evening? No. 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 Okay, uh, I did not see any minutes. No minutes were circulated for the last minute. Okay. Uh, warrants. First up, I have payroll warrant number seven, the amount of $22,398.94. So moved. Motion to approve from Tony. Second. Second by Art. Any discussion on the payroll? No. All in favor say aye. 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 So payroll warrant number seven in the amount of $22,398.94 is approved 500. Next, I have check warrant number nine in the amount of $175,286.75. So moved. Motion to approve from Tony. Second. Second by Art. Items over $1,000 on this warrant are $2,000 to Bennington County Sheriff, $9,900 to Delory, $7,900 to Matt Morris, says Trumbull Hill here. Yes, and we're getting 5,500 of that back on the grant. Okay, good. 1,100 to Morse Repair. Uh, $100,000 to People's United Bank. That's the uh, pre-tax loan. Okay. Uh, 1,600 to Ribco Supply. That's Culverts. 8,500 to TAM. Another 7,800 to TAM, <coughs> 1,500 to tractor supply. That's the compressor for the garage. We had to replace the compressor for this thing over here. It wasn't going to make it. For the new garage? Yeah, for the new garage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What was the one to Delory? The one to Delory was truck 13 again. Truck 13, great, I'm sorry. The 2013 International. So, so both those repair bills were on the one truck? Uh, no, the other one was uh, on the uh, army truck, I believe. Okay. But the. Uh, I'm gonna say it's like an excess of 15 grand on one truck. That's. Well, it was an excess yeah. of 15 grand on one truck. Yeah. The truck it was back for like a week before it had to go back <laughs> for different problems. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot, lot, of, lot of tear, wear and tear <laughs> on a truck that was made in 2013. Yeah. Was that the one the ejector pump? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. That was a ten thousand dollars. Uh, well, there was a lot wrong with it. It's kind of a laundry list. You can look at it. It's, yeah. uh, there was a lot wrong with it. And that was, was one of the class action suit we had. That is one of the one that ended the suit. So right. we will get some credit later on hmm. when we trade it in. We'll get a discount coupon to buy another truck just Basically, we <laughs> right. I know how those suits work. That, that, that is exactly <laughs> what the settlement is. They'll either pay yeah. us a small amount up front or we get a discount on the next one. Right. Right. Remember, it's not the deal you're getting, it's the deal you think you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, 20... We just won't use the engine. 24000 to Weaver Landscaping, that would be... That Chas was Cross Hill, Chasbury. which we're getting... Uh, oh, like, that's Cross Hill. Yeah, and that's <coughs> that back for. Oh, okay. okay. And then 1200 to William E. Daly. And those are the major items on there. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving check warrant number nine, say aye. 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 So, check warrant number nine, $175,286.75 is approved, 500. Um, a question came up by uh, Dave for uh, Mike and I went to look at that truck. Mm -hmm. uh, is it worth keeping that every truck anymore? That's a, uh, it has value. 
because it costs nothing. It doesn't cost much to maintain. Okay, I just yeah. They, they love it for. Big it's rocks. good for tossing they, bulky. Oh, well, no, I, I understand yeah. all that, but I mean it's just. Yeah. No, we don't spend a lot of money on the auto truck, so okay. it's it's really not a big burden. Okay. Kind of hard to hurt it. Yeah, it is hard to hurt the thing, and, and you can throw giant rocks in the back. Yeah. Of it. Just, yeah. No, I, I like that part of it, but I just like your question to what do you thought there's quite a lot of expense on it. No, I'll leave the other one, but that's an engine issue. So. Yeah, okay. Okay, are there any announcements? Any public comments? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm very hard to hear it, so. I'm going to get a little closer. Okay, Please. pull up a chair if you like. I, I like to know since when the town got the right to hire a crew to cut trees on private property. They cut a dozen trees in my, in my place, and there was nothing wrong with them. They're all nice life trees. Um, well, we certainly have been cutting trees in the right-of-way. Pardon me? We cut trees in the right-of-way. They should not be cutting trees outside of the right-of-way. They, they were behind the ditch by the stone wall and everything, and there was nothing wrong with it. They cut two of them that size, and the other was smaller. They cut at least a dozen of them. So... Okay, well, where do you live? He lives in 1041 Chaffer Hollow. It, it's the construction it's the, area yeah. where we're, where we're okay. doing all that work. It's part of the whole construction project up on, on the hollow. All right. Ken was, uh, not Ken, sorry. And Mike was supposed to come over today, well, Friday or today, and I'd never see him. He never showed up, so that's mm -hmm. why I'm here. I want to know what the heck is going on here. I got enough hassle with all this. I don't need this hassle. I got enough to deal with my loss with all this hassle. Um, we have you. We have the trees. Do you know the trees, trees are in the town's about? right of way. Pardon? The trees are in the town's right of way, and it's part of the construction project to make the road stay together. Uh, they are, like many of our roads. It appears over time, because they've been neglected, that things are on people's private property, but it is in the town right-of-way. And if we're going to recreate this road or rebuild this road to make it work properly, we, we need to have the areas for the water to go and everything. I'm sorry Mike didn't stop up today. He was supposed to stop up today. I'll make sure he stops up and talks to you tomorrow. You're the one that office. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, I didn't recognize Yeah, you. yeah, we, we've talked. And I'll, I'll make sure Mike comes up and goes over this with you tomorrow. Because I know you talked to Weaver, too. Oh, so. tomorrow morning I won't be there. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday? What's a good time for you? Uh, I'll be there after 12. Okay. He'll be there tomorrow afternoon to talk to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to Treasurer's Report. Melanie Dexter, welcome. Hello. You want to pull up the September one? Sure. We haven't seen that one yet. Um, let's see what's going on. The big news there is taxes received. As of the end of September, we've had almost 700000 So they're, they're coming in slow and steady, mm -hmm. at, which is just right. <laughs> um, nothing else particularly going on that was like just, just a normal month. Oh, you can see that that wage works negative. That that should make your head explode a little bit. We had a, a refund from them. That's why we look like we're paying a negative amount for our um, uh, health care um, coverage. That that's just a, a refund that came through from some weird thing last year about a disagreement about when when their coverage started. So that's what that is. Okay. No, none of our heads are going to explode over $13. <laughs> yeah. <dollars here. laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Yeah, it's $12. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the budget status, that those look a little strange if you're comparing it to last year. If you look at the percentage of budget in revenues, that's simply because I had not yet gotten the tax bills out as of September 30th last year. So the taxes sure. receivable are not appearing there in mm -hmm. revenues. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you can see that the uh, expenditures are exactly uh, um, on yeah. track the way they were last year. That's what we worry about. Right. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. not. You, you, if, if you were ever going to be worried, it would have been last year that we only had 5% of our budget. Sure. No, but this yeah. year we're fine. Okay, good. Um, and we can look at the October 7th one, too. And basically, all that's going to show you is the only activities. I, I sit in there and I collect money. That's what I do this time okay. of year. So the only thing is uh, that okay. the taxes received. More tax money came in. Yeah. yeah. If you look down at the very bottom, you'll see that we're at, I, I put, I'm going to keep track of that now, taxes received to date. So we're at just over 13% as of now. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty normal. We continue to get uh, one or two through the, or three through the credit card um, every week, which mm -hmm. I, I like to see. And I'm getting calls about it. It's, it's, it's on people's radar. Okay. Um, the other, did anybody have any questions about the cash flow stuff? No. Okay, the, the other thing I, I want to talk about uh, just for one minute is um, there was a, you may have seen in uh, BT Digger another pretty bad, um, um, it's basically a theft from the general um, fund of another town. Did you, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was through a fishing uh, expedition, through a, um, an email that purported to come from the head of the select board saying, I need an emergency wire oh, transfer. Right, right, right. And there were uh, four of them over a period of time um, to $250,000 in a town, probably not any bigger than Shaftesbury. Yeah. Um, and so I've been talking to uh, Dave and our bank about ways to make it absolutely impossible for that to happen in Shaftesbury. It, it already, I, I have, I get um, emails like that and I just toss them. I've, I've gotten that exact one several times. I know Dave gets them yeah. all the time. Yeah, another one tonight. But I'm a very suspicious person and I'm not going to have this job forever. So we're, we're trying to make um, uh, procedures and policies so that it is absolutely impossible. And what I think we're probably going to need, and that's something you guys are going to have to do, is have a policy that wire transfers simply cannot happen except me talking in person to somebody. and and. You know, if it's an emergency, you're going to have to tell it to my face. <laughs> These emails are never, we can't have, have it through an email. And the way that they work is they say, hi, it's me, Tim. I'm just coming out of a meeting, going into another one. I need an emergency wire transfer. I'm not reachable. Um, take care of it right now. Um, so if you are in that situation and you need me to... Uh, wire two hundred thousand dollars to the Cayman Islands. Um, yeah. I, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. So just <laughs> and we need a So policy. we missed our window. <laughs> um, so we 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 just need a policy. And yeah. I mean it is my policy. It will be anybody who, who has who's thinking it's gonna be their policy, but we need to have it be on yeah. the lab. Um, the other thing is I know that, that uh, Dave is, is very on top of all of the security stuff, but everybody who works in this building is taking um, going to be taking a sort of course in um, avoiding yeah. uh, phishing and um, situations where they can take your system hostage and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah we're having a, because I get the same emails, I got an invoice tonight, uh, which coincided with a bill that, that we did just have to go through, and your invoice is ready for your payroll services, which we just had one come through. And, you know, I'm looking at the top, and, you know, it's clearly not us, but, but I get bombarded by them, you get them, and yeah. Uh, yeah. it doesn't take much, just, and, you know, in meetings that was in last week, they're talking about one out of every four places getting hacked and going up for ransom, and mm. it's, you know, one of the problems I mentioned is, you know, we have hundreds of emails that just come with names. We have to open them because I don't know all the residents, and we'll have a lot of angry people if we don't open them. But you just have to, you know, keep in mind never to click on the link, and that's where the fault comes in because you start looking at them. Some you hit it and you're like, "Oops, that was the wrong one." Yeah. So I talked to Tim. We're going to sit down with RCS and uh, make sure that all our backups are in place because we're, the equipment, our hard equipment, and the software and the equipment, plus we replace all that really wouldn't be much. It's just if the data has the levels of protection we believe it has. So we're going to straighten that out this week and just make sure. Because then we could just say, oh, no, fine, we'll go buy new computers and go right back up working again. Because eventually, these guys, they work for NSA and they work for large insurance companies, and listening to them was quite, you know, these guys are working full time to keep these other guys from breaking in, yet. You know, one of their jobs is just going to companies that have already been broken into and trying to repair all the 
things. And these are big companies who have just overlooked something. So. Yeah. But of course, well, what we're talking about here is not hacking. It's just yeah, it's, it's is, much more low tech than that. Yeah. It, it's just they go on town websites and find out everybody's name and, yeah. and just start uh, sending emails. And that's how they want to get in. If they can get into one, they can start working around. Yeah, it's amazing I, what they can do. I got something that had your name on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did not see the VT Digger article that you specifically mentioned, but I've been seeing lots of articles on lots of news sites about. Yeah. Uh, this type of thing, social engineering, hacking, and um, the one I just was talking to Dave about was specifically mentioning small towns, school yeah. boards. Uh, they're going after, um, you know, people who are likely, n you know, not to give it a lot of thought and just, you know, get a little bit of money out of them. And it's, it's happening a lot. Yeah, they've been shut down hospitals, you know. <laughs> yeah, yes. they shut down Baltimore. I don't know if yeah. they're back yet. Um, yeah, so when I talked to the bank, I was saying, you know, what can you do for me to make it so that, that these wire transfers can't happen? And basically, they can't do anything. If I go to them and say, I am certain that was Tim, um, mm -hmm. they, they can say, I strongly recommend that you get him on the phone before you do this mm -hmm. wire transfer, but there's nothing they can do to, they can, so they can slow walk it, they can, you know, um, argue with me, but, but it's, but if I say, nope, you make this mm -hmm. happen, it's an emergency, then they have to do yeah. it. Okay. Can we um, write policies that the treasurer has yeah. to abide by? Yeah, when we have a number of them, and I'm sure I'll find some something, I'll start digging around with the LCT and our risk management people, they have policies like on everything. And it's cybersecurity month, so it's on everybody's mind. So yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll see what we can find on that. But yeah, I think in this day and age, it's just prudence not to wire a large sum of money to anywhere based on an email, no matter how, no matter how good it looks. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, you've never asked me to. I assume that it would be so counter to our usual uh, procedure that yeah. I, I would need to hear mm -hmm. a lot. But, you know, just <laughs> in the in excess of caution, I think it should be uh, something that's impossible as opposed to unlikely. Yeah. yeah. I have just a question, and maybe you, the last meeting we had, which was an emergency meeting, neither you or Dave were here, and one of the on the warrant was a payment to a bond company for sixty-six thousand dollars, and I assume that was for the garage. That's the but, garage bond. But yeah. I was surprised that it wasn't more than seventy-five thousand because I thought the first couple of years there's was, two payments: the fall oh, payment is principal and interest, and the spring payment is interest. Thank you. That explains that. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. But we did okay without you. Yeah. <laughs> we just had that one little thing. Anyway. <laughs> one little thing we weren't we sure about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, is that it? That makes sense. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, roads report. All right, well, project season is coming to an end. Uh, the Sharps Bay Hall project is ongoing. Uh, we have uh, one more thing to do on Myers Road. We put a 300 foot under drain down the center of the road to bring the water off from one side of the swamp to the other. Uh, that will be the last construction project for this season. Uh, the only one we're not going to get to is the hill north of the west of the orchard on West Mountain and we'll have to pick that up in the spring. Uh, we have to get to uh, grading. We have to, we have a bunch of blocks coming, interlocking blocks to divide the new salt shed so we can have the sand on one side and the salt on the other. Uh, you know, it's just pre-winter. It's October, time for pre-winter to get going. The hollow will probably be another two weeks. Uh, we're getting on, uh, we're kind of moving away from the contractor. We, we spoke about this this morning, but uh, on Parron Road, where they put the water main in, uh, they still need to grade that. I understand who's supposed to be contracted to grade it, but they haven't given them a time to do it. They also cut off part of the pavement on uh, Lake Road, so they have to patch that. And, you know, clock's ticking, and they're off out in the swamp there, continuing with the pipeline, but uh, they have to make that. They had asked us to grade the road, and I said, well, there's no way we're grading it because then it'll be our fault when it gets a big trench in it in this, you know, in this February. Because it'll probably settle. Yeah, yeah, I figure it's going to settle. If they didn't compact it right, then you guys come back and fix it. You know, it shouldn't be our responsibility to come mm -hmm. back and fix their mess. 
I don't think Slim Sun left much, Dave. They had rollers done. They're ready to train. Ready to well, maybe they did. If they did, then I hope I hope it stays. So they had 12 it's, right in the train. Yeah, it's still their responsibility, though, and I don't want to take any of it. Well, it's still been settled, but yeah. it's, I think they did all they yeah. could. And uh, that's really about it. We're wrapping up the construction. Well, I, everything's done except for West Mountain. The, the guardrails? The guardrails are coming in after Columbus Day. Okay. They'll be going down North Road. Yep, thank you. I forgot about the guardrails. <coughs> I thought about them this morning when I saw the cones and <laughs> asked about it. Yeah, they're going in next week, hopefully, or the week after, you know, contractors. Uh, and our, refresh my memory, are we doing something with Surface Solutions? Surface Solutions is the people who are providing our uh, so, so magnesium chloride. Right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is working out very well. We're also using a lot more of it. Which uh, kind of we'll, we'll see how that pans out. But we are definitely up on usage now over prior years. But that may be from kind of a change in viewing how it should really be done and how much should go down. So we'll, we'll see. Well, the weather de determines all that. So, huh? so the weather determines all that. Well, yeah, but but the, well, the magnesium chloride, you know, you can't do it quick. You have to make sure that you cover the road properly, and I think. Uh, we're working on that. I think we've just used more this year. Uh, the grade has been moving quite a bit. You don't see it because we have 70 miles of road, 50 miles of dirt road, yeah. but it's out there. And that's what we need. they need to get onto now. Uh, they'll continue ditching and rushing, you know, things like that. But we're still doing roadside mowing right now. We rented a tractor, so that's still going on for another week. Uh, so grading's going to go on until the ground freezes? Uh, probably not that long, but uh, another couple of weeks, I would think. Uh, I'll have to check with Mike on, on the schedule for that. Because it seemed to me, on the, at least on the roads around my house, after holding up for months and months, that uh, with the recent rains, I'm seeing yeah. potholes again. Same here. Yeah. Yeah, I would think that like Horton Hill, I mean, the, the ones that are the, the main impact roads, they definitely would need to get done again. Uh, like Horton, uh, parts of West Mountain, Alter, parts of Tinkham, uh, you know, they're getting a lot of volume. East Road, and they're always going to start coming apart mm -hmm. for everything else. But it does seem to me that uh, they're holding up more, and I'm attributing that to, mostly to the to the compactor, but maybe it's the, the it's magnesium kind of chloride as well. Yeah, it's kind of a combination of, of the work done, the uh, change in, in how the work is done, and uh, the, the, the roller... I think that's more a long term. It helps now, but it's going to take a few seasons for that to have its full impact, I think. But it is. There's no to have that. Yeah, yeah. But there's a combination of things. I think generally the roads all around town uh, have, been, have been pretty good this year. I mean, you're going to hit a pothole. I have potholes, you know, everywhere. If you're going to have dirt, you're going to have potholes. If you have pavement, you know. Go down to New Jersey. You have potholes <laughs> in every <laughs> block. <laughs> so they're, they're all paved. And the, and the paving, the paving's been done on Myers Road for the apron. The paving on Myers is done, and North Road's all yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only thing left on Myers is, like I said, the on the drain at the top for this year. Myers, uh, we may need to do a, a full rebuild from the bend down through the uh, Evergreens, and just redo that. But that's off in the future. So see how the see drain holds really up. Does first. Yeah, no, well, that's the thing. See what the drain does first before we spend any more on it. Kenny, how'd you guys make out looking at the truck Friday? Well, did you go to White? Did you go to Whiteman Friday? Oh yeah, yeah. that's a truck. Pretty nice, huh? Oh, that makes that Dodge look a piece of garbage. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have. We can move right to that because this was tabled, so we can bring up these bids again. Mm -hmm. uh, the recommendation is to purchase the Chevy from Hometown Chevrolet for $40,498. Uh, sorry, Ross Chevrolet, which is called Hometown over here. Yeah, it seemed to have two names. Yeah, it seems to have two here. names. Uh, and that was, there was one other bid, as you remember, from Stevens Dodge for $45,350. So we're looking at a cheaper Chevy that uh, Mike and, and Ken looked at, and they both uh, highly recommended. That's got the Duramax with the Allison transmission. Yeah, positive traction rear end, yeah. limited slip differential. The cab tip or the hood tips Tilt forward. Yeah, yeah. And and it's a lot easier to get at. Yeah. 
it's going to be a lot easier to maintain. Uh, Is that a fiberglass? The frame, I think, looked heavier than the Dodge. Uh, it's got a transmission cooler radiator like this uh, behind the cab. And the, that type of body that's going on there is you need a trans it's a really nice body. Yeah, yeah. And it's got really, I mean, it's the kind of tires you want for that kind of work. It's got mud stone tires that are really aggressive. That uh, I haven't seen a truck that I was impressed with as that one in quite a while. It's got the air ride seats in it. Well, it rides like a truck without the body on it. You wouldn't want to go very far until you get a little better. <laughs> All right, Ken, do you want to make a motion that we uh, buy the uh, the Chevrolet for $40,000? That would make a motion to purchase that truck. Second. Motion from Ken, seconded by Joe. Any more discussion? All in favor of approving the truck purchase, say aye. 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 It's five zero zero. And just as a reminder, that's just out of the equipment fund. There's no loan or anything on that. Right. Yep. And let's see. I think that was probably everything I had in the road. Oh, that was one thing I wanted to mention, Dave. Yeah. When we were going over there, Mike and I stopped over where River was working. Yeah. On that job over there. And he talked to one of the workers where they put that French drain in, I guess they had quite a lot of water. Yeah, yeah, they did. So it was well worth putting that in there. Yeah, it's already draining it out. Okay. okay. There's that little spring under that road. Yeah. Yeah. So, Good. I told you we made the right water. choice yeah. then with yeah. the, the extra 10000 for the yeah. for the drain. Yep. Good. Okay, uh, it takes to item nine, uh, revised town plan. The select board, does not select board, the planning commission, has uh, been working for a year, produced a new town plan. Um, they have completed their part of it. Uh, they formally sent it to us on uh, September 25th. And from the time they sent it to us, uh, we have, it was sent to us on September 25th, we have between 30 and 120 days. So that's roughly October 25th until January 25th to um, hold two hearings, and uh, I hope during that time approve it. And so I've been, uh, was provided by um, Shelly Stiles, our zoning administrator, this uh, handy dandy checklist of things that we have to do in, uh, in the amount of time there. And so I've been uh, going through it. Jay, uh, Dave checked my math today, so I'm gonna suggest this as a schedule. Um, we have to uh, prepare any changes that we want to make. I know some of you have been looking at it already. Uh, I'm suggesting that we, uh, we hold a special meeting next Monday just for the purpose of uh, hashing out changes that we want to make to the plan. Uh, after we uh, uh, decide on our, let's see, the, that, that's step one, or that's in this list, it's step two. Uh, step three, is adopt a uh, resolution to hold public hearing. Um, and I'm going to recommend that we go ahead tonight and set the date for both of our hearings that we have to have uh, for November 4th, first meeting in November, so that would be at a regular select board time, and uh, first meeting in December as the second one. So that gives us a month between us between them, it gives us uh, the time that we need to hash out our differences, get a final document, get it uh, in uh, the paper or wherever it needs to be with a 15-day warning for the first hearing. And uh, by go ahead and, uh, if we go ahead and advertise the, uh, I don't see any reason not to go ahead and advertise both hearings at this point. Do you, Dave? No. Yeah, no, just, we can wait. They're fixed dates, so we can yeah, advertise them. Now. Yeah, we can save on, uh, on advertising space too, right? Or do you think we'll we have just to have to? I'll just have to recheck. Uh, we may have to advertise the second meeting after the first meeting. Okay. I believe okay. think we're going to have to. Okay, but so we can okay. certainly decide tonight on the dates to have them, and that will give us uh, 
all the targets that we need. What's your plan on timing? As far as will we meet at 5.30 and, and wait for the public to comment, or will this be our regular 6.30 and we'll take it up in public under public comments? Okay, I, 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 have a, I don't feel right about having it right along with the regular selectman's meeting. I don't know why. I just mm -hmm. think it would, should be designated this is this is why we're here okay but that but so it's not divided we'll yeah. just have it solely on one yeah when we have done this in the past what we have done typically is we would have it on a selectman night uh, we would start the hearing at 7 p.m so we would have select board business uh okay. before that and then at 7 p.m which okay. gives people plenty of time to okay. get I'm, off from I'm, work i'm and okay come with in. that i just didn't want to say in the middle of public comments during our regular yeah, meeting, we say, "Okay, we're going to take comments on this." I, I just oh no, it. it's a it's a separate deal. It's, it's by law, it's a separate deal. That's what yeah. I want. Yeah, it okay. may coincide with the night of a select board meeting, but the hearing is an entity in itself. Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, so, what are we talking about for time? So fourteen. So. Uh, well, the 14th is just a special meeting for us to hash it out. Yes. That can be at a regular okay. time, 6.30. Um, I don't think we need uh, CAT TV here. Um, we're just going to be wordsmithing. That's, that's boring for the people involved. It's really bad television. <laughs> so uh, I think we'll just, uh, it's certainly an open meeting. People are welcome to come, uh, but I don't know that we need to, to drag Jim out here for it's a holiday, too. Yes. Oh, what? Columbus Day. Columbus Day. Columbus Day. Columbus Day. Uh, I forgot oh, that. Did they change it yet? Yes. Oh, it's uh, Columbus Day. Today that. when I called it Columbus Day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So what? Um, Let it go. Right, okay. uh, does anybody have a problem meeting uh, Monday night, the 14th? No. No. Okay, <laughs> okay. Then we'll go ahead and meet. Are, are you okay, Dave? Yeah, no, I'm going to be here anyway because I want everybody out of the building because I have stuff to move and okay. boxes to go. Okay. I'll take the holidays. Good. Home. No, I didn't... Uh, I didn't make that connection. Sometimes but it's best to get everyone out when I want to dismantle things. <laughs> I, I like doing it that way because uh, if we tried, I don't want to get too close to the end, end date in case, you know, we get into a fist fight about something and we so need to take before. our time. Okay, so hearings will be 11-4 uh, and 12-2. Uh, then after we have our special meeting, then it has to, we have to file a copy with the clerk she has to contact other people like the Regional Planning Commission with that. Um, during that time, we have to prepare a notice for the public hearing. Um, so the rest of that week, yeah. by Friday. Uh, well, I'll, we'll have that prepared before the meeting because we will only have to change a line or two if there was a substantial change to what the Planning Commission made because that has to be submitted to the banner by Tuesday. To hit Friday, it has to be Friday to make 11-4 to be 15 days from 11-4. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'll just be able to adopt it, whatever. If there's some substantial change from the notes that Shelley already has, because it's basically the same warning that she had to do for the planning commission hearing. So if we make some substantial change, we just change that the next morning. Right. So it'd be pretty pretty quick and easy to do. Right. Okay, so yeah, publishing the notice and then getting the the, the changes that we make on next Monday uh, publicized again, and that has to also be uh, 15 days before the hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like that's easier because that's just getting it up on our website essentially. Yeah. Um, we have to prepare a summary. Uh, the same summary yeah, uh, should sure. work again. Mm -hmm. uh, unless we make substantial changes, which I, I don't expect us to do. Uh, this just says we have to post the, the notice of the meeting in the usual places. Um, and we have to f uh, loop back to the Planning Commission. Um, they have to review our changes. Um, we have the final say, but they have to state whether or not the, the changes that we make are essentially legal for a plan that they they still you know fit state law in terms of being a plan. They, the planning commission cannot tell us you can't um, you know promote you know this or that. Uh, 
but they, they do have the responsibility of making sure that we keep everything legal. Um, so we'll hold those two hearings and uh, <coughs> then adopt the plan in the end. And uh, I believe the last time, uh, after the by the time we got to the second hearing, there were no not much input and we didn't make any changes and we approved it that night so if all goes well we can do that if not we can uh, hash out and do it at our um, second regular meeting in December and then we've still got like I say till the end of January if something something crazy happens but I'm not expecting that And then that will be our uh, our town plan for eight years now. Is the uh, is the lifetime of the plan? It used to be five years. Mm. Uh, should we consider a, a different starting time for our meeting on those two nights? Is half an hour enough to do what we need to do before uh, what comes in? That's uh, that's up to the board. Uh, we could consider. Uh, you know, we could do the routine business and we could take it up again. Uh, I think we can, we can establish a time for the hearing. We can, you know, say the hearing goes from uh, 7 to 8 or 7 to 8.30 uh, to make sure it doesn't go on all night again. It's not something I'm anticipating. But uh, I'm open to starting earlier if you'd rather get it all out of the way first. Um, I, I, I guess my suggestion would be let's start at six. If okay. we can start at six, yeah. okay. I just I just think we're going to lose momentum if we. Yep, that's that's probably a good idea, and we don't have to decide that tonight. Even tonight, though, I would like to uh, 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 pass a motion to uh, hold hearings on the new town plan on eleven four and twelve two. So. Motion from Art to uh, for the select board to hold hearings for the new town plan Second. on November 4th and on December 2nd. Seconded by Joe. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Five zero zero. Okay. Good. That's really all we have to do tonight. Uh, then we all have the homework of reading the plan and coming in with uh, what we want to. Uh, to change next Monday. What time do you want to meet next Monday? Six o'clock, right? Well, next Monday is just um, just us hashing out our differences over the town plan. If you want to come earlier or do it regular time, it does. I'm, I'm happy with regular time. Regular time's cut six though. Okay, so we'll meet regular time next week. 1014, right? 1014, yes. All right, Dave, we're going to meet at regular time. Then. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Good. Um, that's all we have to do tonight. If anyone has any comments on the plan, I, we're certainly open to uh, a preview. And Joe, I'm sure once my school teacher wife. Yeah, Joe's wife has already found mistakes. So I don't know if that would happen for her. I know. <laughs> we're we're, uh, we're happy to say have been caught was caught by an alert citizen who sent in some uh, information about the new name of uh, or the new owner of the day, uh, child care facility. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, item 10, municipal phone service. What's that about, Dave? Uh, we need a new provider for our phone service. Our current one, well, there's multiple problems here. The fire department currently is serviced by BCN Consolidated and two separate Comcast accounts. We have BCN Consolidated and Comcast accounts at Cole Hall. So by consolidating, I've been talking to Xfinity and Comcast Business about consolidating all these together. And in the first year, start, our contract with BCN is up in December. I only renewed it for one year last time because when something goes wrong, you call these guys in Boca Raton who tell you there's nothing wrong with the phone and it's all your mistake. And we had a deadline here for a couple of months. And out of the blue, the line started working. But they insisted they never did any work. Right. It was never broken. 
So they wanted $180 for the service call. And I said, you know, who came? Show me some paperwork. So they basically sent the 14-day no shut-off notice for the phone system. <laughs> so I was like, well, that, that's enough of that. So we, we're kind of done with them. They don't care. No, they don't care. They, they just don't care. So, but they kind of had me over a barrel because they're going to turn us off. Right. But I'm like, where, you know, this phone line's been down, and you're telling me it, like, miraculously healed itself, and, yeah. and the phone line's back. No, there's nothing wrong. We yeah. tested. I said, yeah. you tested it from Boca Raton. And yeah. Somehow it works again. At least you got it's over the it. power of prayer. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was miraculous. <laughs> but in the first year, uh, consolidating all this with Comcast, we will run a little bit like ten dollars more expensive than being with BCN. However, we will get charged, you know, hundreds of dollars for non-responses. Where even the new garage has Comcast business, and when we call them, someone shows up. When you have a problem, the truck shows up. You talk to a person. Okay. You know, it's all together. Mm -hmm. uh, this contract for three years. So at the end of the first year, and this is not knowing what BCN is going to offer. So by the time they make their offer for contract renewal, the two will be equal. Uh, because they'll both start on, on December 1st. So Comcast business would be equal to BCN. You have to assume they're going to go up 3 to 5%. And then in the second year, uh, we start saving money. In the third year, we're saving even more money. And then you look again because you have to keep looking at these all the time to try and find a better package. Yeah, because everything changes all the time. But a big thing here that we have a problem with is we have too many accounts. The fire department has too many accounts. And they, and they need to be consolidated. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll save enough here, and they're going to save a lot. So that we'll be equal at least, if not saving money the first year. And then it'll, it'll go <coughs> more savings the second and third year. But if we need to get away from who we have. It's who What's the annual dollar value of this contract? Uh, about, well, you know, the total of all the fire department and everything. About seventy-two hundred dollars on seven different contracts. Do you? Um, That's for a year. Yeah. Is that the? Buy, can we buy them out or? No, it's expired. I only did it for a year. Oh, okay. And I started talking with Comcast about it when we were doing the garage, and uh, so they provide me uh, estimates on how much it would cost for them to do it. You know, it's it's another broker who's going to toss out BCN or. Well, whoever took over from Silver, and I don't know. But we've already had them. We've had these guys, BCN. And the only real player can well consolidate it. You know, the only real players now are, are Comcast Business and some broker, which is going to send me to another company in Boca Raton or, or Tulsa or something. You do that yourself. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's nice in a service that has to be provided like this to be able to get someone to actually respond, you know, especially in a, in a municipal setting. Do we own our equipment? No. So it would be... The only thing we own is a little box in the wall downstairs. So some, they would be coming in with new equipment? Well, what kind of equipment are you talking about? Phones and... Phones? Oh, no. no we, oh, we own all the phones. Oh, no, they would okay. just be hooking us up. All they're going to do is transfer the, their numbers. We own all the phones. We own all, oh, I'm sorry, we own, I was thinking of equipment like switchboards. Mm -hmm. We own yeah, all I'm the phones. I'm thinking of stuff like, you know, our centralized. No, our centralized thing is like this big on the wall. The general we business. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. I remember we we went with BCN and it, right. the equipment was in the package when we. Yeah, but the package, that part of the package was from the other part of that package. BCN is the service provider now. We bought the equipment outright from the broker. Okay. So they've set that up. And now I can get anyone to really service that thing. Uh, it wasn't that expensive. Well, no, I shouldn't say it wasn't that expensive. I think it was the box was about two thousand dollars at the time. But uh, the rest of it, everybody in all the different places, they ha they own all their equipment. We own our equipment. So basically, part of it is just uh, we sign the agreements to transfer the services over. And of course, that runs into BCN too. You know, they threatened. Uh, two months ago that if I transferred early, they were going to charge six months of total usage for leaving the contract early. It's just... Uh, mm -hmm. How yeah. dare you? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but it's just something that I think it's just time to, in this area, you just have to keep, not in this area, but in telecommunications, you have to just keep moving. 
Um, um, do you don't want to let Comcast and Consolidated duke it out for our services? Uh, By that I mean put it out to bid. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they would even bid Consolidated. No. I mean, because what we're getting, what we're getting with Comcast too, is other services. Uh, the internet we're getting from them. We'll be getting uh, because the firehouses have TVs, and with all the combined services we'd be getting. I mean Comcast. I don't know what their internet service is. But I, I know. Uh, uh, I'm not Comcast consolidated. consolidated. I don't know how theirs are. I know Comcast are excellent. So, from personal views of it. So we're getting like a TV phone bundle or a yeah. internet bundle. Yeah, you know, they run business bundles like that because right, like that's why we have so many different things uh, because everyone is getting a different part of it. Consolidated is getting some of the computer lines. Uh, the Comcast, it's, what, there's three different Comcast accounts with the fire department. We have a different one here. And we each have separate BCN. We each belong to BCN for the phone lines. So it's hard to go go outside to only one person is really providing all three services together. And uh, you know, the TV is part of it for the firehouses. And we get a free line here. I will just die dead in the corner. But in an emergency, it might be nice to put on. You know, if we, if we had like an emergency operations center here. You need a TV, which yeah. now we would have. HBO. Stuff like no that. HBO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the internet uh, capability is, is very good. That's, we have that internet at the garage, and we have that phone service at the garage. Uh, I've had nothing but Comcast or, or Verizon for the last 30 years. I haven't had anything to do with a phone company directly. And the BCM was a good initial contract, which is, of course, once you renew it, it goes. Changes. Yeah, and immediately they start nickel and diamond you over repairs. Because, you know, I had to exert a lot of pressure not to pay the second one. Because it's like, you know, I want to see somebody. I, I want to see somebody here. Don't tell me you fix this phone. You know, and of course it started working again, but they didn't bill me for that one. Not to get off point, but in relation to the business equipment, we did just purchase a printer about a year ago, right? A printer? Yeah. A new printer we, was something for maps or whatever, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, that well, we, we talked about a year ago. It just came last oh, week. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's over here. Yeah, that was only like $400. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, there's, it's up here. It suits our needs. And the only map we're going to print in color is 11 by 17. I'm sorry. You know, if you want bigger. Put out the staples because. All right, let's uh, let's figure out the phones and then we can yeah. talk about the printer. Um, yeah, if you want, I can send this all around. We can vote on the next meeting. I just wanted to get it out here. Uh, I, I, I uh, just go with it. I, it, 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 it. He's done enough research. It, it sounds he's like he's done enough research. Yeah. We can't nickel. We can't. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Confusing. You want to? Uh, I think unless you're ready, you have a contract. Uh, well, there are contracts here. Yeah, they sent me all the agreements. Okay. So you ready to sign to sign it? Yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm I'm fine with it because uh, even adding in all the taxes and everything, like I said, it, it works out equal for the first year, gets better the second year, and gets much better the third year, and then we're back like you are with all these contracts. Yes. yes. Okay. So is there a motion to transfer uh, all of our various uh, phone and internet contracts to Comcast Business? So moved. Moved by Tony. Second. Second by Art. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Five zero zero. Joe, did you get your question about the printer answer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, okay. I was just wondering I just how it was didn't working want to get out. Too and I, there. I remember we had a printer that we were purchasing for yeah. the mapping, and right. I just haven't heard anything about it. And I said, well, while we're thinking of business equipment or talking about it, it'd be yeah. a great time to ask. And it was, uh, it's one of those things, there's a number of things through the construction that has come up, and we still have some things to purchase here. See, I don't forget things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. The box is actually right there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right. Do you need any signatures from us? Uh, no, I, I can. They're all made up uh, for me to sign. Okay. Because it's just an ongoing monthly expense. It's just utilities. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. The dog ordinance. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've, I've been talking to uh, the sheriff about getting involved in this. Then uh, I was talking to some of the other uh, towns and some of the attorneys up in BLCT, and when I was up at a conference. And the best way to do this is to take our 
I didn't realize our uh, dog ordinance needs to be updated because it's not oh. worded correctly in parts. So this will allow us to uh, add the sheriff directly in as an enforcement agency. Um, so I just want to keep it, keep it updated and keep the people updated that we are changing this. We're no longer going to use try and use constables. We're going to stop making phone calls. There's 50 to 60 people who are on the unlicensed dog list, whether they have the dogs or not, they don't respond. So by the time uh, I'll have a rewrite, this will be in, this will be up for uh, uh, being decided at the town meeting. This will include if you don't respond to the notice that's sent out routinely by the clerk's office, a sheriff will visit you. The sheriff will, if you don't respond to that, you'll just be issued a summons to go to the Judicial Bureau, which is an automatic $150 fine plus court costs. Plus, I'm working with our attorney to see if we can roll in an appropriate amount of the cost of the sheriff to enforce this. So you're going to go from a $10 dog license to maybe close to $300 in fines and penalties. So uh, I think we've tried, uh, this board especially, from lowering, the, I mean, we lowered the rates like five years ago. And we still have the same core that will not do this. And uh, this year we've had several animal bites. And fortunately, these have been okay. But you know, um, we have difficulty getting parts of this in force as it is. So I need an agency with a little bit more push to it. And if the sheriff comes and issues you a summons, it's just not going away. You're going to have to go to the judicial bureau, or you're going to have to pay the waiver fine. But even if you pay the waiver fine, you're going to wind up paying whatever it will turn out to be fifty dollars plus additional costs that month for having to hire a sheriff to do something like this. So again, your ten dollar dog license is going to go to a hundred, hundred and twenty five dollars. It's really not worth it. But uh, from everyone in this building who called the list, the clerk, the assistant clerk, the zoning officer did it one year, letters have gone out, door hangers started to go out, and we don't we just the last part is the enforcement end, and we're not getting it done effectively. And we all know the story of what we've tried in the last few years, and it just never got on the, off, off the ground. So this will be a simple contract as soon as we pass this. I've talked to Chad, and we'll sit down, we'll work out the parameters of the enforcement. It'll be separate than our annual contract, and that's the rates that we'll put in as part of the fines and penalties. And, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. It's the only way out of this that I can see now. Uh, Does it have to be approved by the voters or is it yes. something? Oh, it's got to be approved yeah. by the voters. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of many ordinances and bylaws that I'm going to start rewriting now that I have more time to, to do things like this. Some of, many of our ordinances need to be updated completely, including this one I just discovered. And uh, we have lots of bylaws that should be just done away with or updated. So we need to we need to clarify a lot of these things. Are all these Australian ballot or on the by the floor or how, how are they? Uh, I'll have to check whether you can do this off the floor. I believe this has to be Australian ballot too. Ordinances and bylaws, zoning okay. bylaws and town plans have to be Australian ballot, I believe. Okay. So you don't want to have too town many plan is, ballot will be huge. Town plan is approved by the select board. Town plan is Australian ballot. No, no, the, the select board approves the town plan in the end. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's our oh, plan. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I thought I said here. Yeah, we take citizen input on it, but it's it's essentially our to do list that we're writing. Because there's a section for Australian ballot on town plans. Um, Let me, we'll read that and we'll look. We have plenty of time to worry about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what we did before. Okay, I'm pretty All sure right. that's right. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. It takes up a lot of space on the ballot anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, is that that for uh, vicious dog or? Yeah, this, uh, this has everything, and they change. And that's one of the key changes in this, is a vicious dog, where there was this loose implication that a vicious dog is one that threatens you or you feel fear from. But it's not really defined. This one really nails that down. So 
the two active cases, or the, which had been active cases, could have been pursued a lot more directly had we had this in place or, or used this new law. What are the options for it? Uh, it's, it's all, uh, there's a broad range of what the board could decide to do. But we can also just issue a big fine for your dog being out there. And, you know, these people have to go to court and explain that their dog was really, as it knocked over the bicyclist, was playing, running loose in the street. I mean, you know, there's, there's far more implications for doing things than coming in and just saying, I'll keep them in the yard and stuff. All of that is still part of it. Right, but what I'm saying is you've got to rate so that you don't have, because I'm a dog person. I don't want to condemn somebody's dog to death. Well, that's, that's really, you know, and that's an old, very old wording that's never going to be changed. But yeah, it, it, that there's so many steps before that. Muzzling, training. yeah, muzzling, keeping them locked up. Yeah. I mean, you have to be a very negligent dog owner to get to that point, or your dog has to be right. sick. So the dog, the dog pays the price for the owner in that case. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's I think that's pretty rare. Well, I don't know. Some people shouldn't be allowed to have a dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we could try to write that into the order. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to let my vicious. That's yeah. a vicious dog, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so you want to, um, permission to charge ahead rewriting the order? Yeah, well, so I just want to keep, let the board and keep uh, this an active topic. Yeah. Because uh, people have to start hearing this. And as it's passed, which I'm sure it will be, um, they have to know that there's going to be consequences for just not following this. Nearly every other law or ordinance has a better enforcement mechanism, and the Judicial Bureau isn't the best method by far to enforce any of this stuff. But uh, bringing the sheriffs and having them involved, other than, uh, well, we've tried everything from the constables oh, so down to everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a public nuisance. And it's a it's safeguard. Too. Yeah, and it's, it's had two dog bites already. Yeah, this this can be a dangerous. Yeah, thing. yeah. And we need to know what these what these dogs are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other business? Yes, yeah, just to let the board know that it's been all time for uh, our insurance. So I'll be following that this week. There's really no change, there's no rates, of course, in this, but it's just updating them on what we have and going over the list of things. So I'll be uh, signing the application and sending that in later this week. Keep us up to date and I'll let you know when they tell us how much that's going to be. Okay. And we have uh, error, and error and omission from the listers. Uh, this is an explanation of the error that occurred on the property owned by Mr. Christopher White Parcel, ID 02014.5.1. With two additional sublots containing 10.19 acres, the property transfer was filed in error, with the transferor, the seller, being listed as Old First Church and Mr. Christopher White being listed as the transferee buyer. These entities should have been reversed on the transfer as Mr. Christopher White was the current owner of the property. The deeds recorded in the land records are accurate. This error has been corrected, resulting in 87,900 uh, valuation as of 1019 being removed from 2019 as billed grand list as the owner, Old First Church qualifies as an exempt property owner. Basically, the property owner transferred this property to the church, uh, and it was recorded backwards. Uh, and that was by the law firm involved in it, I understand. So uh, this was discovered by, by our assessor, and uh, they reversed it. So it, it's a tax-exempt organization now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just need board. So our grand list just went down by eighty nine thousand yep. dollars. No turn signals for the truck yet. <laughs> so what do you need? They need us to approve this, right? Yes. Um, is there a motion to approve the error omission uh, as described by David, reading from the letter from the listers? So moved. Moved by Art. Second. Second by Tony. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Five zero zero. So that is, um, well, we don't need to go through it again. You need me to sign yeah, it? Yeah, if you just sign it. 
And then the last item under other business that I have is Halloween. And okay. two of you who live in the neighborhood, I've been approached by a couple of people in the area who are not thrilled with this activity. And That's too bad. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, we normally just pass a, a uh, resolution to close the street on Halloween from 5 to 8. And uh, I'd like to keep up with what we've done in the last couple of years, hiring three sheriffs, one for this corner and one for each end of Church Street. Yeah. But I do want the board to be aware that a couple of people came to me and... Uh, What's their objection? Uh, too many kids, too much money buying candy, street closed down, kind of mayhem. Uh, uh, I, I'll be honest, you know, being, being a resident on Cleveland Avenue, yeah. Halloween Haven, I love it. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bigger than Christmas. It yeah. really is. Yeah, and it's, it's getting and it's, bigger. Yeah, and, and it's amazing to see all the kids and the creative costumes. And it's just, I love it. Absolutely, my mom comes up to hand out, you know, yeah. hand out candy to the yeah. the pack of wolves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 it's the biggest thing Jasper is known for. Yeah. Well, uh, we absolutely, we, we do. We love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. We can't stop it. No, no, no. 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 Just, yeah. We're not those kids around. No, we much gotta, I, yeah. I make the motion that we close down Cleveland Avenue and hire, but we've got to hire three sheriffs. Yeah. yeah. Is, is one of them going to be? One's on this corner here. Yes. And the other two are at the each end. Yes. Yeah, we need to have somebody here. Cross that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the fire department. No, there's no one. There's no one left to do this. We have to hire. Yeah. And there's no hay rides this year. Oh no, that hasn't been a hay ride in years. Well, wow. yeah, about yeah. five years or so. All right, we have a motion from Art to close Cleveland Avenue for Halloween and hire the sheriff for traffic control. Mm -hmm. okay. Second, so three, three, sheriff. three sheriffs. Three sheriffs, please. Yep. Three sheriffs, uh, deputies for traffic control. Yep. And that's from five to eight p.m. From five to eight p.m. Any discussion? Wait. Oh. Yeah, yeah, actually. Is 8, 8 p.m. Usually people are still out. 9 p.m. I'd go 8.30. What the hell? Unless they don't do half hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it just seems like I remember like in past years, it seems like 8 o'clock. People are still Okay, out. well, we can make it, we can make it 9. Okay. Might as well make it 4 hours because the sheriff will pack up 5 to 9. I mean, I think most of the little kids are kind of, you know, yeah. kind of the older, like, you know, preteen, teenage, teenagers are out running around. Uh, so, yeah. It's, yeah, it's whatever. whatever yeah. Without objection, 5 to 9? Yeah. Okay, sure. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Five zero zero. I have nothing else. Anybody else have business? The uh, I know the state board up airport, airport road up uh, going up toward the new gravel uh, garage, and they pushed that back. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. If you get up there, you ought to see it. It's who's running the more? Tim. Tim's running, running the rented one, and I, I believe David's taking the old uh, one out too uh, occasionally yeah. uh, when he can't when he can't be grading. It's going to make a difference, in the yeah, you know, uh, it's going to take time, but I, I think they've made great improvements yeah. in the last year year and a half. And I think we're on the right track, and uh, if we can keep getting grants and keep hiring contractors so they can go about the routine business of road maintenance, things will get a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Um, okay, reviewing action items. Um, we're still waiting to hear from the judge about the funds. Um, Dave and uh, John Kiernan, no relation, are still working on the details well, of how the water fund is going to be. Actually, that will not be worked on at all until uh, the contract for the preliminary engineering uh, is issued because that's going to be part of the engineer's responsibility to work with the drinking water uh, fund to finance all this stuff. Uh, part of the long-term planning of the uh, thing. Okay. So this is going to essentially, this action item is going to be part of an engineering study? Yeah. It's good, yeah. So that's it's closed from our point of view then. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Art is still waiting for somebody to get back to him, as right. I understand, on um, 
the uh, municipal exemption on uh, securing truckloads. Do we have any any other information about that? Uh, I think we're we're all kind of leaning toward the fact that that we should be doing that. Uh, if ever, all the other trucks on the road are doing it, uh, and it's it's a, a matter of safety for other people, we'll. Uh, we're probably going to do it, but yeah, we would did want to find out uh, what our what our situation is with that. I think so we're going to go, if we're going to do it, to just to tandems. The other trucks, it's barely because they go into New York State anyway. I think New York State, you got to do it. Yeah, well, uh, that comes back to my safety question. If it's a safety question, we shouldn't be throwing gravel at people in Vermont. It's, either. It ain't a safety question. It's a bureaucratic problem. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're going to minimize our liability. Take that under advisement for another week. <laughs> and looks like we, know, that's, that's looks not like just we like did the last that. one. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, it looks like Dave uh, has explained yeah. that we're we're going to move forward with uh, the question of uh, the sheriff. He's going to he's going to continue to talk with the, the sheriff about yeah. how to arrange a contract to do that. And then tonight, um, we just need to um, warrant a special meeting for next Monday to uh, to talk about what changes we want to make to the plan, town plan, as delivered to us by the Planning Commission. And uh, you want to have an executive session? Very brief. It's just an a issue that hasn't come up before, but it is covered in policy and federal law. So it just... I want the board to okay. be aware of what we're doing. It should take two minutes, really. All right. Is there a motion to go into an executive session to discuss a personnel issue? So moved. Moved by Tony. Second. Second by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Shall we repair to your office? Yes.